Hey everybody, this is Kimberly with Starfish Design. Normally I'm doing embroidery projects for you, but um, I had a thought yesterday. There's so many people who are new to vinyl and um, they just don't know where to get started. So I thought, you know what? I should do a video that shows what you can do with one sheet of vinyl. So that's what we're doing. What can you do with one sheet of vinyl? So I have two projects here for you. One is um, a pencil pouch. So this, you can make this, oh, it's kind of dark. This is the glow in the dark vinyl. You can make this pencil pouch with one sheet of vinyl. You need um, two pieces cut at nine inch by four and a half inches, and then you need a zipper. Um, that would be, I'm using, um, I used a zipper tab on here. So you would also need um, one and a half, one and a quarter inch by um, one and a quarter inch for this, and then a three inch by one and a half inch for the tab if you wanted to, or a D-ring strap connector. So but all that you can get from one sheet of vinyl. So those are the cutting instructions. And then the zipper ends up being 8.75 inches long when we're all done preparing it. So this one, I'm gonna show you how to use a prepared zipper. And I fold under the ends so they don't get caught in the seam allowance. And then we use a tab on this end. Then the second pouch I'm gonna show you is a simple credit card uh, coin pouch wallet. This finishes just under four inches um, tall by five inches wide. You can actually make two of these from one sheet of vinyl. I'm using a regular zipper and I show you how to sew this so the zipper is a little bit longer when you're stitching and doing the top stitching to make it easier for you. The drawback to that is you get a little bit of dentedness in your corners and so you don't have that with this bag because we use the zipper tab and then we fold it that back so the zipper's not in our seams. You can make two of these with one sheet of vinyl. I'm showing you how to do these lined, but you can use the same exact technique and skip the lining and it's gonna give you the same results. So what will you need for this project? So you'll need something to help you turn out the corners. So I use these hemostats. You might need a Teflon walking foot if the vinyl is sticky. Um, I'm not happy with this. This is actually the first time I used it. I can't get a real close seam with it. So I'm gonna look and see if I can find a different one. I switched back over to my 1 8 inch hinged um, zipper foot. You need some wonder clips or the generic kind because we don't wanna put pins in our vinyl. You might need the pins for your lining to hold your lining together. Uh, seam ripper and stiletto. This is a cool one my friend sent to me that has one end is a pointing top of your corners and this is a, a pressing surface, which is good for a vinyl. You need some snips, a lighter to singe the zipper, and then some marking utensils. I have a chalk pen and a friction pen. Um, and that's it. So go ahead and grab a sheet of vinyl and if you want, um, it to be lined, go ahead and grab some lining um, material with you. Again, you need two pieces at um, uh, six inches by four and a half inch for this one, and two pieces by nine inch by four and a half inch for this one. This one is boxed on the bottom, which is why it's a little bit shorter. So I'll show you how to do that. And it helps it stand up because it's your pencil pouch. You want it to stand up. And then you'll need a 1.25 by 1.25 inch tab and three inch by one and a half inch for the D-ring strap connector. And then you can use either a lobster clasp or a D-ring. And then you need um, just plan on 11 inch of seam tape or um, zipper, I'm sorry, zipper tape or zipper. And we're gonna cut that down. And this one plan on um, eight inches and then we'll cut that one down. Okay guys, um, make sure you get a drink and get so we can get started here. Have a great day. Oh, if you like this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. Um, and also hit the like button. And then you'll get notified when um, I release a new video. And the algorithms on Facebook will see you like this video. And uh, sorry, my son's in the background yelling at me. You have to hit the bell if you want to get notified of the new videos. But um, the algorithms will see that you liked the video and show you more content just like this. Thanks, everybody. So let's discuss what materials we're going to need. So of course we're going to need the vinyl. 
and I'm going to demo to you first the pencil case. So um, let me move this material out of the way for the um, card holder. So I have two pieces of lining, which is cut at 9 inch by 4.5 inches. And then I have two pieces of vinyl, which is cut at 9 inch by 4.5 inch. So you can get one pencil case out of one sheet of vinyl. Now some of the vinyl, like this glow in the dark, is really thick and it has this flannelly backing. So you could actually make this without any lining if you prefer. But if you're going to be selling at craft fairs, um, that lining is actually going to give it a little bit more oomph and you'll be able to sell it for more money for a little bit less um, upfront. So we're going to use um, zipper tape. Um, actually, I'm going to use, yeah, I'm going to show you how the difference is between using a prefabbed zipper like this Coats and Clark zipper versus the zipper by the yard that is so popular now in so many groups. So this one is actually from Cam Snaps. I'll use this for the other um, because it matches better. Um, but I wasn't planning on using a zipper tab with that one. So we'll save this aside for that. But um, this one, we'll still use a zipper tab. But I'll show you how you can do it both ways. The downfall to leaving the zipper in the seam of the bag is you get that little dented corner, which we don't want. So for this one, I don't really have a color that matches, but it's Halloween, so I'm going to use orange. And um, you can use one of these lobster claws for a tab um, to hook onto it. So you can hang it in your book bag, for example. So I'll show you how to do that. And then these, um, the downfall, second downfall to these zippers from... Coats and Clarks is the pole is so small, especially if you're making this for a child, it's really hard for them to pull that um, when they're in school and you don't want them getting frustrated. So let's find this bright green. So I found these on Amazon and they're just poles. Um, that's the brand name right there. I'll put a link down below. Here's the skew. And you get a whole bunch of them for not a lot of money. And so what happens is you go ahead and squeeze this through the pole and then I'll show you at the end and then it'll help pull on the zipper a little bit easier. When working with vinyl we don't want to use pins, straight pins, because they will purse the vinyl and leave holes in it. So you need to have a, an assortment of these um, little, let me get the camera down a little better so you can see what I'm looking at here. These little wonder clips. I get the generic ones on Amazon. The second thing that you might need working with vinyl is a special foot. And I've actually been okay with my machine. I haven't needed to change the foot yet. Um, all the vinyl I've thrown at it has worked. But I'm going to show you what I mean. So this is a special Teflon foot and the underside will slide over the vinyl better. Do you see how that just kind of slides? But if we take one of these other feet, it wants to drag. So we'll play it by ear, but I'm using the 1 8 inch high, um, hinge zipper foot, and so far I've not had to change to the Teflon foot for any of my bags. I'm going to go ahead and change to it though, just to demonstrate it for you guys. So uh, let me find my screwdriver. I wanted to show you, I have not used them yet, but um, she's not selling them right now. Another vendor had gotten a special order on the compensating Teflon feet. And the compensating feet have like a little bit of a flange on one side so it can guide along seams. All right, let me change. Oops, I don't want to change my needle. I want to change my foot. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put this foot on. And we'll just give it a try. It's a little thicker, though, so I'm going to have to be a little bit more careful when I do my zipper because I'm used to using that 1 8 inch foot. Okay, I have um, Unicorn, or this one's actually called rainbow something or another 
from Wizardry Institute's Tex 45 thread. So when working with um, vinyl, you want to use a little bit um, thicker thread. You don't want to be using your um, quilting cotton. Let's just put it that way. You want polyester when you're working with bags so it's stronger. I've used my embroidery thread with no issue whatsoever. Um, so, you know, but this is nice thread. It gives a little bit better top stitching. I'm on the TL18 QVP Haruka from Juki. This machine will actually take up to, I believe, a 110 needle. So I can actually use like the Tex 60 or 70 in this machine. And it gives beautiful top stitching, but we're not going to use that today. So I actually have a perfect color for this thread, but we're going to stick with what I have in there. Okay, so what we want to start with, oh, and you will need some kind of stiletto and this helps guide it. Am I zoomed in? I am zoomed in. That's okay. A stiletto and a seam ripper. This is a nice one from Alex Anderson that a friend sent to me. Marking pens to mark halfway marks. And uh, this is a chalk pencil. So we're going to set our lining aside for right now. Um, with the cotton, you can actually interface that with a lightweight fusible, like so fuse, not so fuse plus, so fuse, and it'll give really good body to it. So when we want to figure out how to, um, we already have a stopper on the front of our zipper, so we don't need to do anything fancy here, but I will show you on the zipper tape, but we still don't want to get this little chunky piece here in our seam. So I'm just going to go ahead and fold that back like this and put a few stitches in it just to keep it out of our seam. So all I'm doing, I'm going to keep that little metal stopper so I don't have to put a stopper on there. So I'm just kind of folding it back so that it's straight across. I'm going to put a pin in it and then I'll put a couple little back stitches in this just to hold it out of the way. Just a little tip, I um I don't know about you guys, but I have trouble falling asleep a lot of times. So I actually spend my evenings watching sewing YouTube tutor, tutorials on YouTube like you are doing right now. And I've learned a lot of tips from some of the Asian sewists out there that American sewists don't do. And I've been like, wow, I wonder why. Okay, so we're going to go like that. And then we're going to go ahead and measure and cut off the end so we can put our tab. So how do we want to measure this? I see various ways that other vendors have used and um, I'm just showing you the way that I have figured out that has worked best for me. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at my tab. And my tab is a little bit thick. If we were to compare that vinyl with say this one here, you can see how much thicker it is. So I'm only going to use one layer of this vinyl for my tab, but by the time I add that to the end of my zipper tab, it's going to make that really thick. See how thick that is? I need to take that into consideration because I don't want to have the tab get stitched over at the end. So if I'm using something that's thick, I want to leave at least about... Um, I'm going to do a 3 8 inch seam allowance. You could do a quarter inch if you wanted to, then just take everything down by an eighth. So with a 3 8 seam allowance, then I want to allow for this thickness, which is going to be, we have to allow for that coverage. So that right there is probably about an eighth of an inch thick. So I want to add twice that. So that'd be an extra quarter. So three eighths plus uh, two eighths, which is a quarter, is five eighths. So I'm going to leave five eighths at the end of this to have enough compensation for the seam. Now at the beginning, I don't really need five eighths. I only need about a half an inch. So, but measuring off that five eighths is easier for you to subtract from the bigger instead of half inch here and five eighths here, but we'll start with a half inch seam allowance here. Um, so four, five eighths plus five eighths is uh, 10 eighths, which equals one and a quarter. So we want to subtract off one and a quarter inch from our total length, which is nine inches. So that comes down to 8.75 inches. So we need our finished zipper to be 8.75 inches. 
that includes this little tab. So I'm going to go ahead, I want this to be uh, where I'm gonna stitch it, but then I'm gonna have a quarter inch after that, right? So we wanna cut this down to, um, so it finishes at, um, sorry, I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> uh, at nine inches minus one and a quarter, which is 7.75 inch, we wanna measure at 7.5, because then we're gonna have our seam allowance of a quarter inch in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my marking pen and my ruler. Let me move this out of the way for a minute. Okay, so lay your ruler down next to your zipper. Okay, can you see that? And then I'm gonna put my top of my zipper even with my ruler. Let's see if I can bend this down so you can see what I'm doing. Let me zoom out a little bit. There we go, now you can see it better. So there's the top is there, so then I wanna come down to eight and a half because we, or I'm sorry, seven and a half. We want it to finish at seven and three quarters, so we're gonna mark seven and a half to know where to cut and place our our um, zipper tab, sorry. I'm already including the, I'm losing my mind here. We're gonna do seven and three quarters. This is our stitching line. Okay, so seven and three quarters, and then we can go ahead and cut off this zipper. I had the scissors sitting right here, guys. What'd I do with them? here there sorry about that it's going to end up seven and a half when we do the stitch line but we want to cut it at seven and three quarters because our this is going to be our seam allowance okay save that extra tape you never know when you might need it for a trim and then we want to go ahead and burn the edges of the zipper so it doesn't fray okay so now we're going to go ahead and put our zipper tab facing right side facing like that, and go ahead and put a clip on it. And then we're gonna do a one quarter inch seam allowance at two and a half inch, two and a half millimeters. This is where the actual, um, I think you can see, let me zoom in a little bit. This is where using the stiletto comes in handy because we don't want pins in our vinyl, but we need to hold it in place to stitch it. So I'm gonna go ahead and stitch, oops. Did I come unthreaded? I came unthreaded, guys. Hold on a minute. It's stuck over here somewhere. The thread got kind of gobbly gooped here. There we go. So for my machine, I find it's easier to thread it with the machine with a foot down. And then I put the threader in, and then there's a tiny little notch in here that you gotta catch. If you don't catch that notch, it will not thread. This one is a little tricky to thread to get used to because you have to get just inside that notch. And there's actually like a little spring and you'll hear it engage. And I don't hold it so tightly. I was holding it too tightly. So as soon as you hear it, engage that little spring you can let it go of course on video i won't be able to get it on the first try my needle's in the right position huh. oh, let's go okay try again It's always the case when you're on video, it doesn't want to do it for you. Oops. There you go. You can feel it and hear it if you are up close to the machine. But that's the key is there's like a little spring in there you have to hold on to. Okay, so let's do this again. Clip our little thing to get it in place 
And you see I cut this a little bit wide because the zipper is only one inch. I cut my little tab at 1.25 inch square. So you want to backstitch over the actual zipper. And so this is where your stiletto comes in handy. You can hold this to keep holding it on the side. And it's hard to see on here, um, but this one yellow line is the one quarter inch. This is um, seam tape from, or alignment tape from Seam So Awesome, I think it is, or yeah, I think that's the name. Okay, so now we have that. So we're gonna go ahead and just fold it back on itself and then fold it under. And you can trim off the extra if you want. But you won't be able to see it inside the bag since it's lined. So I'm not gonna trim off the extra. Now change to a 3.5 millimeter and we're gonna top stitch as close to the edge as we can, approximately 1 8 inch away from it. So the same thing, we're gonna go ahead and backstitch over it. And that backstitch will get caught in your, your zipper seam, so don't worry about seeing it. Go very slow, this isn't a race. When people are complaining about top stitching, a lot of times it's because they're just going too fast. And see we go. Oh, my attention might have been a little bit off. Oh, that's just bobbing of the tail. And since you're using polyester thread, you can actually just burn the edges like that and they'll singe away. Now you can go ahead and trim the extra edges here. All right, and see how thick that ended up being. Oh, look at my needles. Really thick. Okay, so now we're under here. We're going to go ahead and just put a couple of tacking stitches to hold this in place like this. And again, I'm going to start from the end so I can put my needle down. I'm going to put my stiletto here and then I can pull the pin out and drop the press, presser foot and now it's in position. And just back tack, just a couple stitches. You know? Then I'll hold that in place while we're sewing so it doesn't get hung up on you. You can do the same thing on the other side. And I'll show you how to do, um, I will show you how to do the zipper tape when we do the Little wallet, ID wallet. All right. I don't know why I keep using these big scissors. I have little snips over here for this reason. Okay, so now our zipper's all ready. So before we go on, we wanna go ahead and prepare our little D-ring strap connector. So I'm using uh, three, one and a half inch by three inch rectangle. I'm gonna draw a line down the center of it at three quarters inch. And this is where you can use either some beacon glue or some double stick tape. And we're gonna just put it right along the edge there. And if you don't have this, don't buy it special just for this bag. You can go ahead and just um, clip it to hold it in place while you sew it. We're only gonna sew on the sides. We're not gonna sew down the middle where the gluey double stick tape is. But if you're gonna use this, I'll have a link in the comments or in the description. It really does help a lot. So I've put one piece on either side and I'm using the 1 8 inch because it's much more narrow and it won't take up as much room. So you don't risk getting it in your seam allowance. And then you just wanna fold this into the center. And this is really thick. Um, so if you don't think your machine can go through it, then I would totally just do one layer and 
um, reinforce it. My machine may not even be able to get through this. If I'm being honest here, it's really thick and it's gonna be doubled over like this. So I don't know if my machine's gonna get through it. We're gonna find out together. But the alternative what you can do is just use one layer thick, um, but you wanna reinforce it because this fuzzy stuff will wear down over time and you'll be stuck with the thin layer of vinyl. So I reinforce it with a piece of Decoville light uh, or you can use like five eighths inch gross grain ribbon and I just kind of glue it down in the center or fuse it with the iron and it just gives a little bit of stability so it doesn't wear on that tissue as much or the flannel. We might end up having to do that. I'm gonna go really careful and see if we can get through this but by the time we have all these seams together like that, that's really thick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna top stitch down on both sides of this. I'm still at 3.5 inch and I'm gonna go 1 8 inch along the edge. And you don't have to necessarily back stitch because this is gonna get caught up in your inside. And then when you get to the end, you can just pivot. I mean, my needle came a little bit off. You can pivot and turn, go across the end and then go back down. Okay, so now our strap is ready. So I'm gonna insert that through my little lobster clasp, which is three quarters inches wide, and put a clip on it, and set it aside for right now. Okay. So, we have our tab ready, we have our zipper ready. Now we want to go ahead and get our uh, panel ready. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of fancy work because um, my chalk pencil won't show up on here. So I want to start my zipper at a half an inch from this end. So I'm going to go ahead and mark a half an inch, but I'm going to have to probably go to the back side and do it. Let me see if I can, if it'll show up. Oh, it will. I can actually see it. So I mark a half an inch there. And we're going to start with our zipper down. And you see how these little tabs are actually a little bit farther down. So by starting at a half an inch, I'm going to open my zipper up. By starting at a half an inch, and it's going to, by the time we get to that little zipper top, it's going to be closer to that 5 8 inch that we were compensating for. And then just clip along the edge. I'm still at 3.5 millimeter seam length. And it's best to have the curvy part of the clip on the upside so that it, it just kind of glows, flows along the bottom. And then get down here to the bottom. And I keep losing my clips. And you'll see. Now you see how we have enough room when we do our one three eighths inch seam allowance for that to flip around inside. So we're gonna baste this on. There's many ways you can do this. Some um, sew us to use um, basting tape, the double stick tape that we just used. I actually just prefer to um, not use all that extra tape and I just prefer to baste it. And this is when using the stiletto to help guide that zipper right along the edge is very helpful. So it helps hold it. So just keep it always in front of your foot. You don't want it to go back inside your foot. So I'm just trying to stay as close to eighth of an inch as I can. It's a little bit harder to do with this presser foot. So I think I'm gonna look and see if I can find a Teflon zipper foot. I know they make them. Knowing me, I probably already bought one and just don't remember where I put it. Okay, can you see what I'm doing here? I think you can. So, let me zoom in a little bit more. So I'm just going right along the edge. And I'm going slow. Like I said many times, this isn't a race. You don't have to be the fastest. 
Now keep your needle down and we wanna go ahead and move our zipper pull out of the way. And sometimes I kind of have to finagle it around because I have a tiny little thread guide there and I don't wanna break that off. So if I kind of pull it around here, I can pull it past without risking breaking that thread guide. Uh, where's my, these little guys here also come in handy because I have a very big fingernail and I'm not ready to break it yet. So um, I can't get under there, right? But these hemostats are awesome. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead, reposition, get ready, and then go ahead and finish. And I think the time it takes to um, stitch this down isn't any longer than the time it takes to glue it with glue or with um, double stick tape. Okay, and I'm going to go in slow to show you. All right, see how we have it all now? Now, um, go ahead, and you could have done this already, and I just forgot to mention. We want to make sure our lining is lined up pro properly. So go ahead and mark your center back so you can line up your lining panels. Now we're ready to put one of our lining panels on. So go ahead and um, fold your lining in half and use either a pin or the marker to mark the, the center. The other thing you can do, so mark in the center here. The other thing you can do is just take a tiniest of little snips right in there. Make sure I still have it even. I think I got it messed up. So crease it and make a tiniest little snip there. Oops. And then you have a little tiny little triangle that you can use to line it up. So that's another way you can do it. So we're gonna go ahead and reclip this from the other side. So this time I wanna match up my markings. So matching the one on the back with that little triangle. And the reason is our cotton has given it. So we wanna make sure that we um, have it lined up all along the way. So actually that's a little bit off. So I like to take and line up the corner here like this, hold that in place. Then I like to make sure that this is all even on this side and put another clip over here that's gonna hold that in place. That way I know that it's square on that end. Okay, and then go ahead and, oh, I'm out of clips, there it is. Go ahead and clip the rest away. And the same thing down here, go ahead and clip it there so you know it's gonna be even. So now we're gonna go ahead and reduce this to a 2.5 millimeter stitch length. And we want to sew this at one quarter inch. So I like to start, um, oops, I like to start with the fabric, um, the needle a little bit past the starting point on the fabric. When you have an issue with your machine, sucking your fabric down into the feet dog hole. Oh, it's this fabric, this vinyl is very slippery. It's trying to slip on me. When you have that happen to you, it's because you're starting on the edge and it's just pushing it in. So if you start, I don't know if I can get zoomed in anymore. There we go. If you start, so your needle is a little bit into there and just push your needle down and then take a stitch forward and then back stitch. It'll prevent your fabric from getting pulled down into there. So I'm gonna go ahead and guide this along and I'm gonna stay on this one quarter inch seam line as much as I can. And my fabric is already kind of wanting to push against it. So for something like this, when it's slippery, you can actually use that seam tape, the double stick tape. That's a good um, um, time to use that is if you're using slippery materials. So I'm moving my zipper pull again. I, I'm actually just gonna pull it down a little bit farther, keep going, and then we'll move it. 
so I have a little bit more underneath here. Okay. I meant to move that all the way to the end. Right. I'm using my stiletto to help guide my fabric. All right, now I'm going to move my seam, my zipper pole out of the way. These are my stilettos. You can use your fingers. to adjust the pressure on my machine. It's pushing my lining fabric a little bit. Ooh, I'm gonna, I got so distracted watching that lining fabric that I didn't realize I was all off kilter on my seam allowance. So I'm gonna just reposition this as I'm getting all off kilter a little bit. Where did I get off? Right there. All right, start this again. And I have a way up here to really change the pressure. So I'm just gonna adjust that a little bit. Sometimes it's better to um, stitch from with the lining on the bottom against the feed dogs. So I'll show you that on the second half. And it feeds it a little bit better. But you have to figure out what works best for your machine because every machine is different. Oh, this presser foot is like, I'm not used to this. I'm used to that tiny little skinny one. So it's kind of pushing it. I bought one of these quick change um, do hickeys, but I haven't installed it yet. I tried to install it and I got confused. So I need to look up the instructions on the internet and try it again. Okay, and when we get to the end, we wanna go ahead and backstitch. All right, so there we go. We have our zipper installed and we're gonna go ahead and finger press our seam allowance, um, finger press our lining, because we don't want to use iron on our vinyl. I'm gonna go ahead and flip it, so I'm just finger pressing. Flip it open like this, and then just rub it along. And what you're gonna do is get the ends all nice and snug, like that. down here so fold it it should be nice even on top of each other and then like we did before we're going to match up the bottom here and clip it to hold it in place and i'm missing a clip i need more clips there it is and then hold over here in place because this vinyl is very unwieldy. It wants to kind of roll out and do what it wants to do on its own. So this is gonna help us to keep the lining and the vinyl together. Okay, and then we're gonna to switch to 3.5 inch for top stitching. And then let me zoom back in. Hopefully this works a little better. Some complain they couldn't see what I was doing. Now, we wanna start stitching from the zipper and end at the zipper tab. One of the tricks I learned is if you stitch all the way here, then that's what causes all that little um, dented corners. So we don't wanna stitch through that. So we're gonna start, and I can't change my foot position, so I'm just gonna have to do the best I can. Let me open my zipper up and then I'll move it. So I wanna start where the zipper end begins. And then what I'm gonna do as I go along, I'm kind of pulling my lining underneath to make sure it's staying even. And then you're pulling the lining 
the zipper tape out of the seam. So go ahead and take one step and then go back. And then we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing. We're gonna use our stiletto to help guide us. And then you wanna make sure that your zipper is not stuck inside. You should have a, approximately an equal seam reveal or zipper reveal how much zipper you see all along the way. All right. And again, I'm pulling on the bottom here. Let me zoom out. I'm pulling here the lining on the bottom as I stitch along. See how I'm holding that? That way I can make sure that, and I probably just got off kilter. Move my zipper pull real quick. That way I can make sure that my lining is pulled out and it's not gonna be all wobbly loop, wobbly gook on the back. If your lining gets messed up, it'll get hung up in the zipper pull, okay? And we can go ahead and move this out and then again, we're gonna stop at the zipper tab. And we'll take one or two steps backwards. And that's it. I got a little bit off in the middle when I was not paying attention, but not too bad. Okay, then go ahead and trim with your snips. And this is time when you can use that little lighter if you need to. And now you see on the back, we have a nice even seam and our sides stay together. Okay, now we're gonna repeat this whole process to add the second lining or the second exterior. So this time we're gonna go ahead and make sure that our edges are lined up down here. So line it up with your zipper there and then your edges down here and then clip it. Okay, and go ahead and it along and you can leave this at 3.5 millimeter because we are doing a basting stitch now. Okay. I'm going to stitch it, baste it from this side. And I'm going to use my zipper, or I'm sorry, my stiletto to make sure my zipper stays along the edge of my vinyl, which is why I'm doing it from this side so I can see that. You see how if I zoom in, you see this little edge right here? It's wanting to slide off, so we don't want that. So that's what the stiletto will help us to keep that. Keep moving it as we go along. And it's not going to put a hole in anything because you're just kind of gently laying it on there. Keep going. Go down as far as you can get. And remember, we want the edge of our zipper, not this piece. So where we have that kind of folded under, and I'm actually gonna move the zipper pull now because I'm getting close and I can tell it's not wanting to move. Let's keep your needle down. Lift up the presser foot. Passer? I didn't. These are actually a little bit harder to pull than um, my custom zippers. There we go. All right, put it back down. Make sure you're using your stiletto to make sure it's nice and neat and even. Now this is just your basting stitch, so if it goes a little off kilter, it's perfectly fine. Okay, you see we want this tab to go underneath this presser foot, so I'm going to hold it here and keep an eye out and make sure I'm still aiming for the edge of the vinyl. All right, there you go. So trim these little tails as you come along because otherwise they will get caught in the middle. Now, just like we did before, this time we're gonna leave the lining on the bottom. Remember I mentioned that? We'll try it on the bottom and see if it feeds a little bit better. So I'm gonna go ahead and move my zipper pull down here, out of the way, and I'm gonna mark the center of my 
material here, fold it in half, and just do a tiny little snip. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and find my center here. I didn't mark it, shame on me. It's always a good idea to mark all your centers, even if you're not gonna need them. Down the road being marked, it's not hurting anything. Okay, so now, the, the other thing is you can actually line this up, let me zoom out, with the rest of your material. So having the center mark is not as crucial. So we're gonna line this up with our um, end of our vinyl. And remember, we're gonna stitch with the lining on the bottom this time, and let's see if we get a little bit better, smoother stitch with the feed dogs feeding the fabric. I believe we will. And then go ahead and just mark the centers, match up the centers, and then the ends. And then if you have a little bit of uh, looseness in between all of this, you can work it out just kind of gradually as you're stitching along. So I'm gonna put this at the very end like that to hold it in place. Now we wanna go back down to our seam, our sewing seam length, which is 2.5 millimeters. And we're gonna go ahead and stitch this down at a one quarter inch seam allowance. Again, we're gonna start with the needle down already in the material and then we'll stitch forward and then we'll go back a stitch. And this just prevents your machine from pulling all of that underneath. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and stay on our one quarter inch seam allowance or stitch, yeah, seam allowance. <laughs> as close to it as we can get at least. I'm already having trouble. Oh, there we go. My fabric was starting to get tucked under there, so I had to make sure I pull that out. I don't want a, pl a, or a pleat. Looked like it was gonna get stuck under there. So pay attention to what your machine is doing underneath as well. And this presser foot is much wider, so I'm having a harder time keeping it on that one quarter inch it's going against the zipper and trying to um, come out. The zipper teeth, I should say. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and move the zipper pull. Why I keep trying it with my thumb, I don't know. I don't know, but I know my thumb's not gonna work. Wow, these zipper poles are really hard to move. So I'm gonna turn it over this direction. why I switched from using those kind of zippers because they're really hard to do. Okay, make sure your lining is still not on, um, didn't go gobbly walk underneath while you were moving that zipper pull. And I know it looks like I'm coming in at an angle. It's because this presser foot is thick. So I am going to look on Amazon and see if I can find a tough one zipper foot. So I'm afraid that my seam, that's not too bad. My reveal on my zipper is a little bit off because my seam, seam allowance is a little bit off, but it's not too bad. Okay, so now I'll switch to 3.5 again. And the same thing we did before, we're going to go ahead and fold, open, and finger press our lining so it stays out of our zipper pull area. I have a little thread here. I'm going to trim that real quick. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and pull this out just like we did before and fold it back on itself. So for the lining and the end here together. 
and clip it to hold that in place so we can top stitch. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and meet this corner and that corner and clip it to hold this lining out of the way. And the same thing down here, even though I just lost all my clips. What do I keep doing with those clips? There they go under the machine. Okay, so I'll go ahead and match up down here and see how tight I got that. That seam allowance got really off kilter. Let me make sure I'm gonna be able to zip this actually. Yeah, I can, but it's really off kilter. So do a little better than me, but look for a Teflon zipper foot. So I'm, this I believe is the QT brand and I'm not gonna give it a good thumbs up because it's just too thick. Okay, so I have my corners marked. So my lining is out of the way. I always like to stitch on this side for some reason. Uh, it doesn't matter, you could stitch on this side. It's just habit for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this underneath. So I'll, the whole time I'm stitching, I wanna make sure my lining is staying to the evenness of that. Um, the um, exterior panel. Okay, so this presser foot is actually gonna kind of ride right alongside the exterior vinyl. Let me zoom you in, you'll see what I mean. You can kind of see how this presser foot, the inside of it is right along this vinyl edge. So again, we're gonna go ahead and take one step forward, two steps forward, two steps back. I think I just sang a song. Okay, and then go ahead and go slow so it's even and keep, make sure you're pulling your lining out underneath so it's nice and even with your edge of your vinyl underneath. And then use your fingers or your stiletto to help guide this down. And try and go slow. If you have to, slow your machine down because the top stitching is gonna show and you want it to look nice. And as you get close to that zipper pull and it's in the way, Go ahead and move it out of the way. Now it's gonna get a little bit gonky down here where I got the seam allowance a little bit off, but we'll do the best we can. I'm going to stop at the end of the zipper. Back stitch. All right. Oh. And Kimberly just completed the ultimate failure. I ran out of bobbin thread. I just did all that stitching with no bobbin thread. Or did the needle come undone? Oh, the needle came undone. And I didn't even notice it. All right, well, we get a second chance at our top stitching. That was silly, Kimberly. How did I not notice that? I don't know. Okay, so that's something you don't want to do <laughs> because uh, holes, vinyl, don't go well together. And I didn't notice that. Okay. I think my bottom should be okay. Let me make sure that it's working. So sometimes it's a good idea to look behind you and make sure you're going. Make sure you're stitching. Okay, let me move this. This long thread there. Wow, get out of our way. Move our zipper pull again. Right. 
I think this material is, this vinyl is actually kind of dark enough that it's not obvious where those needle holes were. If I'm going through them again. I think I have lined it up well enough that I'm going through them again. Okay. Now that looks much better. So let's trim our little thread here. I don't know how I did that. So trim your little threads. All right, zoom back out. Okay, now let's remove our clips and see where we're at. Okay, so the, oh, I just kind of missed the lining there. See that? That's okay. I'm not going to worry about it. I don't know what I did. I pulled the lining out too much, I guess. All right. So, now we're ready to go ahead and make sure you trim all the extra strings. And I'm pretty disappointed this tulip pink fabric shreds a lot. So go ahead and pull your zipper about three quarters of the way open or closed, however you want to look at it. And we want our tab to be on the side, the left-hand side, if you're right-handed. If you're left-handed, you might have this totally opposite. So if you were left-handed, you would want to pull the zipper pull from here, so you want your tag over here. So it serves as two purposes. It serves as one, to hang it from a bag, but secondly, it serves to um, help hold it as you're unzipping the bag. So I'm gonna move my lining out of the way, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and move my clip and I'm overlapping it slightly like that. I really think I'm gonna have trouble with this, but I'm gonna go ahead and try it. And we're just gonna baste it down um, one eighth inch away from the edge of our fabric. I'm gonna start it inside there. Let's see if we can get through it. I'm gonna go real slow. All right, so now it's basted it in place. That's all we needed just to hold it in place. Okay, now we're gonna match up our lining and exteriors together. Let's go ahead and Put a clip to hold the corners together. All right, now we want our zipper to fold into our lining. So you see what I mean? It's gonna fold into the lining. So push your zipper tab and bend it in half. Put the lining together and the exterior together. So now on this corner here, you want to make sure that this is lined up as close to the edge as you can get it. So, and then go ahead and get your lining fabric and you can use pins on the lining side. So I'm lining this up as close as I can and then I'm gonna put a pin in it to hold that in place. Okay, now I actually like these thicker clips here at this junction. Okay, so make sure that that's lined up correctly and then put a clip in it to hold that together. Okay, then go around the whole bag and pin. When you get to the bottom of the lining, we need to leave an opening for turning the bag. So what I like to do, I put my needles uh, parallel to the edge, except here. This is my reminder that I need to leave an opening to turn the bag. So I put the pins perpendicular, and that's where I'll start and end. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and meet up this joint over here. And again, make sure you're matching the exterior is right on top of each other, and the lining is right on top of each other. 
and pin it. And this junction is going to be really close because we have that zipper tab there. The our D-ring strap connector, I mean. Okay, so then go ahead and pin your lining together. And there is a little bit of give in your cotton, so if you have to kind of mush to get it together. All right, now just go ahead and go around and put a few more clips if you have them, just to help keep your lining together like this, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and start on the hard end, so in case I can't get through this, then we will go ahead and move over to um, a different style of tab. So I'm gonna go real slow. I'm gonna start on the lining here. I'm going to get my seam ripper stiletto here and get that started. And then I want 3 8 inch seam allowance, which is the green line on my little tape here. Okay, so I'm going to get started. And you can actually take a little bit more generous of a seam allowance on your lining. So you can do a half an inch, except when you get up here close to the um, exteriors together, then you want to stick to your 3 8 inch. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this away, and then I'm gonna start coming up the hill. And then when I get there, I have the Haruka QVP. Now you might use a, a, a hump jumper, I don't have one of those, but if I raise this little, uh, let me see if I can show it to you. This little doohickey, if you raise this until you can see the red, that will raise your presser foot up to get past these thick areas. So I raise it up when I'm, and honestly a, a hump jumper would be faster. So I raise it up when I'm trying to go through these thick areas. I'm reaching underneath here to make sure I'm not gonna hit the uh, hardware. And I'm gonna kinda, I think I'm too far over. Yeah, I'm on the... And it's still kind of not wanting to get in there even with the, even with the, um, micro lifter raised. So you kind of need a hump jumper. Oops. I don't have one of those. So I'm going to go ahead and scooch forward and just kind of come in here like this and go this way. And then I'll come back around on the other end. And you hear that pressure? It's really struggling because it's a lot of layers. And what I could do, I only have a 9014 needle in here. I could move up to a 100 needle and that would take care of it. Okay. Now I'm gonna put my micro thing down again because we're down on the bottom. And then I'm gonna turn this over and flip it after I get the end done and we'll come at it from the other direction so we can make sure that that seam is tight. See, the green line is my 3 8 inch. I'm going to go to the end, and I'm going to back tack. I'm going to end it. Now, if you're not using this connector here like me, then you could just go ahead and, oops, pivot and move around to the other corner. But because I'm kind of showing you, this is the tricks you can do when you don't, when you can't get it past there. There's always ways to do this. Okay, so now I'm going to come back over here and look at my stitches and they're barely catching there. So I really need a thicker needle and I don't have one right here, so I'm not gonna worry about that right now. 
I'm gonna go ahead and start in the D-ring strap connector. Make sure I'm at my 3 8 inch mark and I'm gonna go this direction now. Oops, I forgot to do the lifter. No wonder it's struggling. This lifter just pre presses, releases this up a little bit just to help get through this thick area. Okay, and I'm gonna get a little bit past here and then I'm gonna shoot over and hit that lining at the one half inch mark. But I have my pins the other direction, so I'm actually just gonna go ahead and finish this off. I just wanted to get that um, seam done and then we'll flip it around and we'll do it the other direction. So I think it looks a little bit better this time. Yeah, it's a little tighter. But yeah, um, I think if you're using a machine like this, then don't use that thick of a tab. Go with option one and or option two. Make it three quarters inch and then put a piece of ribbon or something in the center to strengthen it. Yeah, it didn't even catch all the way there. So I'm gonna have to go ahead and stitch around here again. Okay, so now let's resume our normal stitch path. Did the thread came undone again? I don't know how I keep doing it. I think because it's so tight with the um, seam that it's pulling the thread out when it cuts it. Okay. So we're three eighths inch seam allowance. And this is how you handle the corners. When you get to the corner, and you think you're at that three eighths, I'm a little bit off. The key is you wanna make sure your needle is on its way up, not just going in. If it's just going into that seam, you're gonna miss the stitch. Okay, and I'm gonna back tack across just to reinforce that. Okay, now we're back at 3 8 inch. And when we move to the lining, we're gonna switch over and do one half inch after we get past the junction of the zipper panel or the zipper area. Again, you can use your stiletto. get here I'm going to back tack and then come back around see I'm just going in so I'll make sure it's on its way back up okay let's see if we can get through this corner without any extra effort oh what did I just do oh goodness Came out of this extra little helper, so that might be part of the issue. So this won't work on my um, ledge up here. So I actually have a thread stand, and when I moved it, I forgot to put it back. So it's just coming out. The tension's off. Okay. And you gotta reach in 
and feel for that with your thread and get your thread in that spring. There's a spring in there. It's actually the hook for the actual um, threader. Okay, let's go ahead and start down here. And this is the end that our tab is on. So it's gonna be a little bit difficult to get past with this presser foot, I feel. I might have to switch over to my other presser foot. You see that the tab is there? This presser foot is just too thick. We'll see if it can get past it. I don't think it's going to. I'm gonna back stitch. Right, I'm gonna, we don't need this Teflon foot anymore anyway. I'm gonna go ahead and take this off because it's just too wide. And I know I won't be able to get my um I won't be able to get my get it through there. So I just love this little hinged zipper foot. To be honest, I use it almost all the time. I haven't actually found a need to remove it because it's glided over all of the vinyl I've worked, I've get thrown at it so far. Nothing has stuck. Okay. So, let's get this little guy repositioned because I just undid him. Right, let's restart our scene. Just kind of watch as you're coming in here and fold it that little seam that's staying even on top of each other. So my vinyl just came up from underneath. I don't want that. I want it to stay right underneath there. Okay. Mm, there we go. Really so. Oh, my vinyl came undone again. I'm going to fold it underneath. There we go. Now, again, if you don't want to use the zipper tabs and go through this extra effort, then don't. Just leave your zipper um, going into your bag seams and that's perfectly fine okay now we're going to come back down here and as we get past this we're going to coax our way over to that half inch i actually do like um what would it be i do in between three eighths and one half inch so five sixteenths all right that came undone that's okay And this is a little wonky here, I can tell, but that's all right. Okay, so we're gonna come on down here, back stitch, and then pivot. And try and re-straighten my lining. Got a little bit off kilter. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and stitch over halfway, um, about a third way actually with back stitch. And we're gonna go ahead and start again and back stitch. I'm checking my seam. It's a little bit off wonky there, so I'm going to come back in from the other direction and stitch that again. So let's finish this over here first. Okay, so in between three eighths and the one half back stitch. Everything is done. 
I'm going to come in here and come over across this little seam a little bit more because it's not quite. Oops, I'm sorry, I touched here. Moved you. I didn't quite get it good enough. I want it as close to that tab as I can get it. go ahead and put a tiniest of little boxings in these corners. So if you go ahead and reach inside, you're going to need your ruler here. And a small ruler is even better, but I don't have my small ruler sitting here. What did I do with it? Okay. So you're going to go ahead and pull your corners apart. And you can go ahead and finger press these seams back upon themselves. The other thing you can do is go around and stitch another short stitch all the way around um, on the vinyl side because sometimes it shows the stitches. In this case, it doesn't look like it's going to. So that's an alternative you can do if you have a vinyl that's shown stitches. Go ahead and just um, do, do another stitch all the way around about um, 1 16th inch in and I'm going to try and open this zipper up. Well, it's not working for me, but that's okay. So what we want to do is we're going to pinch the corners and open up the seam because it's really thick. So open this up, fold it back on both sides. You can also alternatively nest the corners, the seam allowance inside. But let's just try this. Okay, so open it up. You pull the corners away from each other. This vinyl is very unwieldy. I guess I should have tried a different vinyl, but it's cool in the dark, so I thought it'd be fun for a kid's pencil case. Okay, there we go. So see how I have it separated apart now? And then you want the seam right on top of each other. So grab a hold of both sides and pull it out away from each other. And you want the seam right, this seam, right on top of this seam inside. And you can feel that with your fingers. Okay. And if you're doing cotton, you can use a pin to make sure it's lined up inside. But I'm not using cotton, so a pin's not gonna help me. It won't go through very easily. Okay, and then where's my clip? Go ahead and put a clip on either side. If you can get it on the actual vinyl, even better. Okay, now go ahead and grab your ruler, and we wanna measure in um, one half inch from the tip right there of our bag. So I didn't said one half inch, I went one inch. So what happens is you'll see that one inch actually forms on. I'm so sorry guys, I did not realize the camera stopped recording. So I went ahead and drew the line to, um, that I'm showing you in the previous, I drew the line and then I just stitched over at all corners. And on the vinyl side, I went ahead and did another stitch about a quarter inch inside the um, first half of 
first one. And I'm just gonna trim these corners. And the vinyl, you can get about 1 8 inch away from the final stitching. And again, if you need to see this up close, I have another video that demonstrates this. And I will put a link to that. So sorry about that. All right, we're cutting off all the corners. And now that's left just to turn our bag right side out, do our lining, and then we're gonna close it up. So this is our lining, so go ahead and work. Usually I try to push one corner out first and work that one out. And you just kind of fold in the lining, the bag out like this. Oh, let me zoom out a little, see if you can help see better, okay. And it's so much easier if you can get the zipper open all the way. But for some reason, oh, you know what? This might be one of those locking zippers. That could be what the issue is. Some of these Coates and Clark zippers are locking. So they kind of like, you have to have them in the right position to unlock them. All right, there's the lining all the way through. Let me use my little stiletto or uh, what are these things called again? I always forget. Hemostats. See if I can use those to get the zipper to uh, go all the way. There we go. All right. And then go ahead and flip it all the way out. And then I like to make sure all the corners are pushed out before I close the lining. Working it out. And see, so you have your corner here, so reach inside the lining and use your fingers, or you can use your hemostats because they're rounded edges to push that corner out. Don't push all the way through the vinyl, though. And then do the same thing on this corner. I use my fingers first to get it started. Sometimes I don't need the hemostat. Sometimes my fingers is perfect. All I need. And then just push the corner to make sure it's already all the way out. I did not do a very good job lining up. That's okay. And then come around here and you can use your hemostats to help push up your side edges. And get them out of here. So this is the side that has our tab on it. And our tab is buried down there still, so we need to get it, work it out. So just use your hemostats or whatever device you're using, bamboo skewer or whatever, and work it out. And if there's a tiny little gap in between the tab and your seam, that's totally okay. Let me see how I'm pushing on it. You can see my hemostats through there. All right. And then go ahead and push your lining down into the corners, make sure it looks good. Go ahead and close it up. Make sure everything looks good before you close up the bag. All right, so I have a couple of strings here. This little corner, you can kind of train it to come down by bending it into there. And then you can actually put a little clip on there. Let's see, if I'm pressing it together. And then when I zipper up, that little corner will come together nicer. And there's no dented corners because of the way we did it. So now we can go ahead and put our seam length back down to 2.5, pull our lining out, and your lining pretty much wants to just fold itself back down into a seam. So if you just kind of put your fingers in and go like this, it kind of wants to automatically go into the seam. Now you can actually um, finger or hand blind stitch this closed if you want, but we're talking these are pencil bags for kids. They don't care if they're gonna see the little seam. If you have any of those cute little tags, like more me no cells, and it's more me no all together, then add those on inside the bag now. 
and then we're going to just do as close to the edge as we can catch them both pieces so it's like about a sixteenth of an inch and then again we want to back stitch always back stitch to catch your seam if you're using really fancy materials and you don't want ugly back stitching then leave your tails long don't back stitch when you're all done with the seam pull the tails to the back and knot them off into a three-way knot and then singe the ends with a lighter it's alternative all right so I'm gonna push this back down in here and then I'm pushing the corners of the lining into the corners of the bag it's still a little baggy but it's not too bad so I'm reaching inside there make sure to push this down so we can train that and there you go cute little bag little pencil pouch um now this is the let's see if I can do this in one move so this is a little hooky thing that we were talking about earlier so if you put that up and through this hole you might have to use the bigger hole down here that's closer to the juncture there and then fold this back into itself like this and pull and now it's so much easier to open and close that zipper especially when you're talking about little kids okay and then it's all ready put your pencils in there and it's set okay um, when we return and take a little intermission I will show you how to do a cute little credit card card pouch coin pouch um, tiny little wallet okay I'm gonna go ahead and push this down like I was mentioning before and I'm gonna put a clip in there to try and help train this vinyl to stay down if you have that issue with your vinyl oh that clip is too big that's okay and there's what the bottom looks like okay I'll be right back okay last bag that I showed you using the zipper tabs this one we're going to just show you how it looks if you put the zipper right into the seams so I'm going to go ahead and cut my zipper by the yard a little bit long and I'm going to put my zipper pull on it this lesson is not teaching you how to do this so uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and add my zipper pull there's lots of videos on how to do this. Um, I first started doing it with a fork. Um, it's the only way I could do it for a long time, but I've kind of gotten much better at it now and I can kind of do it. I feed one end in and then feed the other end in at an angle. And then I put it flat against the table and then I pull the zipper pull and that works most of the time. This I haven't used this zipper tape for quite a long time. This is from cam snaps and it's when I first got started before I started buying all the fancy custom zipper tape. This looks more like your traditional um, Coates and Clarks kind of zipper tape. So we're going to go ahead and I always end up getting a little bubble there so I'm going to go to the end and kind of back it up again just to make sure I have enough in there. Okay so um what we're going to do is go ahead and mark our center of our material of all our panels. So I'm going to just go ahead and put a little nick on the lining and on the exterior. Just a tiny little nick. This one was actually a little bit too big. That's okay. my lining stacked together here. Let's see if we can do it together. Okay, so just like we did before, 
we're going to go ahead and baste our zipper down. So we want our zipper pull to be on the left hand side. So we're going to go ahead and put our, um, the benefit of keeping the zipper pull, the zipper tape longer is you can keep the pull out of your way while you're stitching until the end. So we're going to go ahead and put our zipper pull on the left hand side. And then we're going to go ahead and just clip this in place. And we're going to base it down with one eighth inch seam allowance, 3.5. This is six inches wide by four and a half inches tall. Let me get a little bit more slack down here where the pole is at because it's going to want to get hung up under the zipper foot. So I cut it about three inches longer than it needs to be. That way we can keep it out of our way while we're doing all of the stitching. Okay, so I have my um, hinged foot zipper foot back on here. I'm not going to work with that Teflon unless I'm getting some sticking from the vinyl. Again, we're using our stiletto to help guide it. Make sure our zipper stays right along the edge of the vinyl. And this is just the basting stitch, which again, you can use um, double stick basting tape if you prefer, or even some Fabri-Tac and glue it down. But I prefer just doing this basting. I seem to get a better result that way. Okay, now go ahead and put one of your linings. This is gonna be so quick, you won't believe it. The downside to this method is that you're gonna, it's hard to get the little corners neat. So I'm gonna go ahead and line up the lining on the edge like this to make sure it's even. And then make sure my little notches match in the center. And now we're gonna do a one quarter inch seam allowance at 2.5 millimeter stitch length. And this yellow is really hard to see. Um, I know a lot of people complained about it already. I'm a little curious as to how much QA they did. I'm working IT, so I think if I had tested this, I would have said, um, you don't want that quarter inch to be yellow because it's really hard to see. Okay. Now we go ahead and finger press our seam, our lining to the back. Open this up. If you can finger press the vinyl, then do that as well. Some vinyl will and some won't. And then again, we're gonna clip this at the end to make sure that our lining is out of the way. And then fold this together here, match up the corners on here with your lining if you cut everything the same size, it should all match right now. Okay, and then we're gonna pull the lining underneath while we do the top stitch. So for top stitching, we want 3.5 millimeter seam length, and we're gonna go ahead and start just about a quarter inch in away from the edge, and then we'll back tack. We'll go two forward, one back, and then again, we're gonna pull the lining out as we go along to make sure it stays out of the um, zipper tape seam, okay? And we're just going along and top stitching right along this edge. So the presser foot is right here along this edge of the um, vinyl. Use this 1 8 inch presser foot. That's why I love it, you guys. Um, I think I did get this from Amazon, so I'll put a link in the comments or in the description below. And I'm going to stop about a quarter inch before. Okay, so trim off our tag. 
So this is from six inch by um, four and a half inches. So you could actually make two pouches from one sheet of vinyl. The sheets are nine inch by 12 and a half inches. So flip it over, match up your ends here um, in either end and your zipper. And again, we're gonna go ahead and switch to three and a half. Oh, we're still there from our top stitching. Now we'll do our basting stitch. And we're gonna do one eighth inch seam allowance for that. And we're just gonna baste this zipper to the exterior or the other side of the exterior, the second panel. And I'm using a stiletto to help guide it along. If you don't have a stiletto, you can use a bamboo stick, a chopstick, anything like this. You just don't want your finger down there. And you wanna make sure that whatever device you're using, you're keeping it away from the needle, okay? So that's basted into place. So now we're ready to do our second lining. Let's go ahead and match up your notches for your centering right there. And then match up your corners. So everything should pretty much come in alignment if you cut everything exactly correct. So make sure this line is even this is even. Okay, and now we're gonna to go to 2.5 at a one quarter inch seam length. Or stitch, 2.5 stitch length, one point, or one quarter inch seam allowance. I said that the incorrect way, okay. back stitch and this is the yellow line that I'm following down here my lining is just a skew off a little bit Let me get this back. I might have to pull those stitches out I think I got it off because this yellow line is not exactly matched up with my one quarter inch line on my machine huh, I didn't do a very good job I thought I did but I did so that's okay one thing you'll know is that most important thing is consistent seam allowance your one quarter inch may be a scat different than my one quarter inch. As long as you're doing it the same across all of your um, pieces, you should be okay. All right, so there's that. Now we're gonna go ahead and fold this out of the way. Or, I'm sorry, finger press this open. And you can actually take this to the ironing board if you need to, but it's such a small piece. I don't find it's necessary. And then open up your lining your exterior I mean and again you can finger press this as well and then we're going to top stitch so again we're going to go ahead and pull our pieces together at the corners to hold that square just like that and then we're going to go to 3.5 stitch length and one eighth inch seam allowance and we're going to pull our lining underneath as we go and we're starting about one quarter inch inside the vinyl <laughs> leaving that extra little oops sorry leaving that extra little quarter um, will help our corners be a little bit nicer and then we're just gonna stitch along making sure we pull our lining out as we go make it should stay even with our vinyl our exterior if you're using cotton. See how much easier it is to do this when the zipper pull is not in the way? So I'm stopping about a quarter inch before I get to the end of the seam. Cut all your thread snips as you go along. Okay, so now we're ready to go ahead and pull our, I'm not adding a zipper tab or anything to this. I'm not adding a tab to it, I should say. So go ahead and open up your zipper pole. And then we're gonna go ahead and remove our clips and we're gonna match lining to lining and exterior to exterior. So I'm gonna go ahead and 
join these corners here. Actually, I'm going to use this little one. There it is. I really need to order some more of these clips. They get lost over the times. I accidentally get caught up and put into the trash. Okay, so we want to push our zipper, fold it so it's inside to the lining. So make sure these two pieces are lined up right on top of each other. And the zipper should be into the lining. So you see how much bulk we have here now, because we have our zipper in that seam. And then go ahead and pin your lining. And just like we did for the pencil bag, we wanna make sure we leave an opening for turning this little pouch. So put your pins perpendicular Leave about three to four inches so you remember to leave that opening. Then over here, make sure you line this up. Again, the zipper should be going into the lining. And then make sure that that little corner is matched up. Put a clip in it. And then go ahead and finish your pins. And this should be a much smoother so so start at 2.5 stitch length and we're going to start down here the same thing we want it um 3 8 inch seam allowance but for the um lining we want to make it a little bit wider so we're going to do just under one and a half inch between the 3 eighths and the one half inch on my paper so back tack Leave the opening. We are not going to box this one. I'm just going to back tack at the corner though, just to give it some strength. And as you get closer, this is when you want to get the little stiletto to help you guide this and keep this together. Because I can see that my the pole of my zipper junction is pulling on my lining. And I wanna keep that as neat as I can. Okay, now we got to move this clip out of the way. And I'm gonna use my stiletto and kind of keep an eye to make sure that, and then we wanna to work to our quarter inch seam now. Or I'm sorry, 3 eighths inch. 3 eighths inch which is the green line. You could do a quarter inch, actually. This is thin vinyl. Okay. Now, one thing that you can do that will make your life really a lot easier is just to draw your seam lines already on your material. So much easier if you do that. It just takes a few seconds to draw your seam allowance and then just go ahead and um, so right on the seam lines. And I've got this kind of pulled away a little. So I'm trying to fix this up a little. I'm back at 3 8 inch because I'm doing the exterior now. If you're more comfortable with one quarter inch, then do one quarter inch, it's fine. We'll just make sure it's even and consistent. Okay. Just back tacking at those corners just gives them a little bit of strength. Okay, I'm going to keep using my stiletto to help hold this together. Okay, now we're getting ready to get to this really thick junction with the zipper tape here. So, and after we get down the hill, we're going to go ahead and navigate to our slightly thicker seam line stitch seam allowance on our lining 
See how I just coasted to that. Oops, I went a little too far. go ahead and trim off the extra zipper tape. If you can get your lighter in there without burning the cotton, then go ahead and um, do that and singe off the edges. So if you do it really fast, it's all it takes. Oh, I didn't even show you. It's all it takes. And then I'll singe off the edges. Do it on both sides. That's all it takes. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and trim the corners. And what I like to do is most people just do this. Let me zoom out, sorry. Most people just cut off the corner like this. I don't do that. What I like to do is grade the seam. See that? And that's going to reduce that bulk in the corner and give you a much nicer finish. So just go about two to three inches and grade the seam. And you don't even have to cut the corner first. You just grate the seam and that cuts the corner as you're going on. I do this in my in the hoop bags as well. Oops, I just, oh, I backstitched some safe. And you can go ahead and trim down the seam allowance if you want. I did 3 8 inch just because it's easier for most people to um, do a wider seam allowance. Um, but you'll notice that um, I'm just used to quarter inch because that's what I did from sewing. Now I just burned my, cut my edges again. So let me show you that on the lining. So again, we're going to grade the seam. So we come in at an angle like that. And then go in at an angle, off at an angle. So now we're ready to turn this right side out. Oops, let me trim off the bottom. Really helps to trim the actual vinyl side, if, even if you don't trim that lining. Okay. So we're gonna reach inside, and just like we did before, we're gonna reach over and get the um, corner, one of the corners, and push that forward. And you can make this slightly smaller if you like, but I just find that um, this is a good size for a coin pouch. I usually do, when I do my in the hoop ones, I usually do five and a half inches by four inches. It makes it easy. When you do much smaller than that, it's kind of hard to get the cards out. And so work your lining so it's pulling over your exterior like that. And I can see I did that corner very well, that's okay. And again, if you need to open it up, the zipper inside a little bit e more, it's helpful to do that. Let's see, I should have done that before I started to pull the lining exterior out. There we go, and then the lining. I'm sorry, I keep seeing lining. the exterior will come out a lot easier that way. This one's pretty pliable. If you're having trouble because it's too thick or it's not pliable enough, then you can use a blow dryer and um, put it on it for a few minutes um, or put it in the dryer for a few minutes. Just something to heat it up. If you don't have either of those, you can use a pressing cloth and just use a warm iron and just to heat it up a little bit and it'll help make it a little bit more um, pliable for you. Okay, so pull my lining out now so I can reach in there and get my corners pushed out. Now, if I hadn't trimmed off the corners like I did, 
there is a way that you can push the corners out and um, you kind of fold the corner down on top of itself. Um, I'll show you how to do that in the tote bag bag I'm making, but I haven't finished that yet. Okay, so I'm just reaching in with my hemostats and gently pushing that corner to get it out because I trimmed that extra uh, vinyl off. It's a lot easier to get the corner out. And then I go ahead and start inside here with my fingers, my thumb as it would be, and try and get as much as I can pushed out. And then use your whatever device you have, your hemostat, or there's a, a precision turning tool that I believe so sweetness sells. Um, I'm not sure if it's sold anywhere else other than her. And you can use a chopstick, um, whatever device you have. And then just kind of rub the hemostats along that seam and it'll help, and on the bottom too, and it'll help give you a nice smooth seam. You're just kind of rolling your vinyl open with the hemostats. Oh, I didn't have that corner all the way done, and I thought I did. It wasn't until I did the bottom that I saw that. Okay, now, so here we get to the denty corners part. And I'm gonna rub this between my fingers here. You can rub it between your fingers as well. And see how that corner is all dented in there because you have so much bulk. So put your hemostats inside like this. Put your thumb here and just pop it up. And it'll come out. And just work it gently until you can get that out. And you see how my zipper is already coming out more? I'll just kind of work it. As your zipper opens up a little bit more, you can kind of get it in here more and just kind of pop it out. You see how that works? So now it's a little dent, but because we didn't sew all the way to the edge, we left that one quarter inch, it's not quite as bad. And then on this side, we have the same kind of thing going on where we have this bulk of material. So here what we do is we wanna push this seam into the seam allowance. And you just kind of push down with your hemostats or whatever you're using and push, and it'll push it into the seam allowance. And that makes for a little bit nicer finish. And then you can go ahead and zip this closed. Make sure it's as much as you want. And it's still kind of a little wonky there. See that? I can't get it all the way closed. So I'm gonna work this a little bit more. And I'm just kind of okay. And now all we have to do, oh, this corner needs a little bit more work. All we have to do now is uh, close our lining. Let's go ahead and pull your lining back out. Let me work this corner just a little bit more. See, I looked on the other side and I see it's not popped out all the way. There we go. Okay, now pull your lining out. And again, it's just, it's gonna wanna close down on itself as soon as you push those corners out the lining with your fingers or with your hemostats either way and then just fold it in like so and it got it wants to just form that see that seam just put a couple clips or pins and then go ahead and get it back down here and we're gonna do that 1 16th seam allowance AKA as close to the edge as your presser foot will allow you. Remember to backstitch. And again, you can do this by hand with a blind hem stitch. Trim off any extra tails. 
push that back in. And to make sure you push the corners all the way down into the corners of the exterior. And there's your little bag. So now you can fit your credit cards in here or your coin, whatever you want. And you can make two of these, just need a zipper and two, one sheet of vinyl, and you can make two of these little coin pouches. So if you wanna adjust your size a little bit, this is finishing out to be uh, five inches by, not including the zipper, just under four inches, 3.75 inches. So I think this is a good size. And you see, you do get a little bit of denty corner there, but that's okay. It's so much easier. And if you do these in a um, um, assembly line, you could do a whole bunch of them in a short time. And these are great um, fillers for our craft fairs. Um, you know, $10, $15, you can sell them. Again, you're in two from one sheet of vinyl. And if you buy the zipper by the yard, which is so much cheaper, then you can get, um, I'm, you're talking probably $3, $4 for materials. And you can sell it for $10 to $15. Okay, guys, I hope you like these ideas on what to do with a sheet of, one sheet of vinyl. And please subscribe to my channel if you wanna be notified of new videos. And have a great day.